the South African economy has been on a downward spiral for some time now. No amount of intervention has been able to turn the situation around. The beleaguered NDP has not been able to live up to its objectives as expected. Currently, the high job numbers at 27.7%, poverty levels at 30 million people, GDP growth projected at 0.5% is not something desirable. With the country on a technical recession and having been downgraded to sub-investment grade by two rating agencies and one notch above the other leaves much to be desired. So with so the situation like this, where do we go as a country? I have political economist at uh, Tex University, Professor Lorenzo Fioramonti, who penned the book, Well-Being Economy, Success in a World Without Growth. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'd like us to start with the definition of well-being economy because when people talk about the types of economies, they've heard about a capitalist economy, socialist economy, Ten years ago, we were talking about the first economy and the second economy, now the well-being economy. Well, let me start by saying that some of us had already predicted the mess in which we are. For years, we had indicated that our growth wouldn't be happening at the rate expected, that we'll be going for a downgrade, and that our poverty and inequality problems wouldn't be resolved. So for many years, we thought that growth, economic growth, was going to solve all the problems. And the difference between the growth economy and the well-being economy is exactly in increasing living standards, in making life better for everyone. When growth happens, that doesn't necessarily mean everybody's going to be better off. Actually, we've had a lot of growth in the past in South Africa. A few people got very rich, and many people stayed the same or only got marginally better. And, and, you, and you know what the problem is? Many people are arguing that we are striving towards a well-being economy, but when you look at the means of production, we tend to be a consumerist economy. So the clothes that we wear, the food that we eat, we're not producing them. We always have to rely on people of other nations to provide what we eat. Absolutely. The future is really about building local economic development. That means moving away from large-scale production and increasing the possibilities for people to start their own businesses, for artisans to be the backbone of a new economy. One problem we have in South Africa is that we have a very small population of small and micro enterprises, especially artisans. There are many more in other African countries. South Africa being the largest economy in the continent has actually many less, less and less artisans than, than the rest of Africa. <laughs> what you're saying is exactly the well-being economy. We need to build an economy in which natural systems are preserved and promoted, in which we invest in people, in training them to become the producers of the future, producers with a sustainable, uh, sustainable ideas and a sustainable approach. And that's exactly the opposite of what we have. I couldn't agree with you more, but here's the problem. We get trained to look for jobs. We go to school so that when we graduate, we can apply for jobs. We don't think as people who should be creating these enterprises and being the job creators. I think here there's also an impact of colonialism and apartheid, telling people that basically they couldn't really have success in life and that you know they needed to rely on somebody else to create the jobs for them. I think we're seeing a bit of a shift already in the younger generations and what we need is a different education and training model. The future is about supporting small and micro enterprises. I would say this a million times, it will never be enough. It's not about investing in large corporations, the ones that you have just you know like talked about in the previous interview. We have to actually look at the small companies and how do we make them work? And our graduates, the people that study at our universities, should dream of becoming entrepreneurs and starting small businesses, not CEO, bankers, and mm. so on and so forth. Professor, you're saying something very interesting in your book. And actually, this is the first time I hear somebody agree with me <laughs> that we should not write off public education. Many people are obsessed with private schools. Please take us through that and your personal experience. Well, I think a good government should only do two things. Invest massively in public education and in public health care. That's what government should really do well. Uh, my experience has been that in South Africa we have way too many private schools and many of them are not necessarily giving our kids better education. They may have fancy infrastructure, they may have swimming pools and tennis courts, but education is something totally different. Education is about injecting and creating the skills that we need for the future. It's about building entrepreneurialism and self-confidence. And many of these schools are simply looking for competition and sort of, you know, like short-term gains for students. That's exactly the opposite of what we but but in the same breath, we can agree to disagree that even though people shouldn't be talking about private school, but government should not neglect public schools. But when you look at township high schools, oh my goodness. 
See, for as long as private schools, and I mean, I'm, I'm in favor of you know having a few private schools that may provide something that is different. But for, for as long as the, the the bulk of the sector is occupied by private schools, and some of these companies are making billions and billions of rand in the Johannesburg Stock Exchange, the government will have a perverse incentive not to invest in public education because if public education was working in this country beautifully, people wouldn't make money out of private schools. So the question here is, what kind of education are we giving our children? And we cannot succeed without a strong and good innovative public education. The question is, how do we build it collaboratively? How do we build partnerships? There are beautiful projects around the country that are trying to strengthen public education for it to become the backbone mm -hmm. of the in future fact, economy. In fact, wouldn't you be saying that actually the education we're giving the young people and our, our children children right now is that we're frustrating them. Look at the pillaging of SOEs right now. Look at the current economic state where we are on junk status, technical recession, 30 million people living in poverty, and so on and so on. Exactly. And we're not going to be able to create jobs in the future unless we change the structure of the economy. I think our children dream of a different South Africa. They'd like to know that they can make a difference, they can turn things around. But then they watch the news and all they see is a broken economic model and some of their textbooks you're still you know, portraying that as a sign of success. Mm -hmm. We need to change that model as quickly as we can. Going forward, how do you match the theory in your book and juxtapose it with the current economic situation going forward? Look, Colin, we have no alternative anyway. Junk status, zero growth, uh, job losses, we're losing jobs. Poverty hasn't really changed, as we know from Statistics South Africa, in years. We have no alternative. We have to start thinking business unusual. We have to start thinking out of the box. This book and the ideas in this book, going beyond this short-term obsession with growth and trying to invest in those sectors of society that can create the jobs and can have the biggest impact on the well-being of people and our natural systems, which are the foundations of a strong society. That's the future. Right, Professor Lorenzo Fioramonti, Wellbeing Economy, Success in the World Without Growth, and uh, talking to us about uh, his suggestions regarding how we can achieve a well-being economy. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you for having me.